Okay. Uh, we now have a talk from the people from the Electro Lab, and I can't pronounce your names. Uh, I think it's Sylvain Redix and David Rochelet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And uh, they will tell us things about um, vacuum technique. And they just told me they finally managed to set up their exhibition outside. So you can actually see some of the work outside after the talk. Please, after the talk. So, uh, Hello. Uh, I'm Samuel. I'm the, the founder and the current chairman of the Electrolab organization, which is in hackerspace in France, uh, near Paris. Um, so if you have a look at the hackerspaces in the world, you can see that there are a lot of us outside, and it's cool and uh, everything. But uh, when you zoom in, you can see that in France, we have you know, much less hackerspace than, than the other countries. And especially uh, near Paris, the west of Paris, we were quite feeling alone two years ago when I started this project. Um, so. The Electrolab, what's the point of building a, a new hackerspace? What, how, is it different? Yeah, no. how is it different from the other hackerspaces in France? Uh, well, in fact, in France, hackerspaces are not very popular because of the hacker world. Uh, people often you know, misunderstand hacker and they messed up with pirates. So they are saying, oh, boo, bad hackers, stealing films and uh, bank, uh, banking accounts and, and everything. So. We wanted to do something different to, um, to do new projects and also to uh, enhance the image of the hackers in France. So first of all, the hackerspace is built from scratch. And we have a five-year build and insurance company. This is quite new in France, in fact, because all the, the, all the hackerspaces are, most of the hackerspaces are in squats. So they don't have you know, a real existence. So just, they're just here. And they can be uh, moved away in every day, in fact. Um, and it's also quite new in France to have hackerspaces doing something else than computer security, uh, informatic, computer science, IT, and this kind of stuff. So we wanted to do electronics, mechanics, chemistry, and some physics, as you will see. And uh, it's a registered French organization, so we have a real existence. We have done all the paperwork. We have, we have done everything to exist, uh, and so we can, you know, receive donations and be founded. And we wanted to have the lowest uh, monthly fee possible to be sure anyone can come in our hackerspace without you know, having to pay too much. And yeah, so we done everything by the book or well, the most we can. And as a hackerspace, we, the, the most important thing is to do everything open source. Uh, we are sharing all the projects uh, through the wiki for the whole community. So uh, it's also something you don't really find in France. So the founding of the Electrolab. Um, first of all, I, I was quite alone. And I said, OK, I want uh, to build a hackerspace. So how should we do? Um, the first thing was to find a place, of course, so we can stay. And, uh, so I, I spent something like six months going all around the town and asking companies and, and building owners if they had some spare room they can share with us. And of course, because I was introducing myself as a hacker, that was quite difficult. But you know, one day, a guy told me, OK, we have this basement you can have. And it's in pretty bad shape, but you can have it. I don't need it anymore. So <clears throat> this was the. Electrolab, yay! <laughs> so we had to build everything, uh, you know, from electricity, floors, uh, water power plumbing. And the first thing we have to do was to remove two centimeters of concrete, of footed concrete, from the whole surface. It was quite a challenge. But we managed to do it, and then we were able to uh, make ourselves comfortable, like installing the floor tiles, uh, the, electronic, the electric cabinets, uh, the plumbing. And as we were doing those very interesting uh, work, we began, and so the team started to work, to work. And in fact, hopefully we had this very uh, highly motivated team so we can do stuff, even if it's not interesting, such as you know, doing plumbing. plumbing. Um, 
as we are a French hackerspace, uh, we like food. So that's one thing we French guys do uh, after uh, sucking at foreign languages is to eat. So. And then we organized the place. Um, so this was the electronic space uh, two years ago, uh, one year ago, and uh, this year. So you can see it's having a lot of work. Uh, especially the last year was used to uh, enhance and repair uh, appliance and measurement equipment. So we have now a lot of space, a lot of nice workspaces with all the equipment you can need to solder. Uh, you have uh, power supplies, you have all the tools you need. So basically a member of the Electrolab can come and just be able to work uh, on his projects uh, in a few minutes. But we wanted also to do chemistry, so the chemical lab uh, two years ago, uh, one year ago, and this year. So again, we have been uh, improving and working on, on the, the equipment and the place. Uh, mechanics also two years, one year, and this year. <laughs> and also the main room, same thing. We have been working on a lot. But I think it was worth it because now we are one of the most equipped hackerspace in France, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, the kitchen, that's not very uh, interesting, but we had to do it, so we did it. And then because of this highly motivated team, then we made also special, special operations that had been very important for the place. Like we got this mail saying, okay, we have nice leads you can have, and it's at this place, and you have a week to take it, or it will be destroyed and towed away. So we organized those operations with very heavy equipments and heavy uh, um, human, uh, sorry, wow. We had to do it, and we did it with 15 people. Uh, we organize all the things so everything will go smoothly even when you are uh, moving a two-ton uh, leaf. So some facts about the place. We know how we now have 180 meters of space available. Uh, we installed some like 300 meters of plumbing and two kilometers of wires. We now have five electrical cabinets and we use quite a lot of powers of power. And so we now have eight electronic workspaces, including one dedicated to SMD solderings and one to radio frequency. And we have one lathe and three milling machines, a lot of measuring devices. So we can now start doing projects. Oh, yeah, the organization, wow. Okay, so we've been doing some workshops about you know, Arduino coding, uh, milling, uh, TIG soldering. We have also developed a full uh, process to do uh, uh, PCB etching with uh, metallized hole. So we are now uh, explaining to our members how to use all the, all the machines and to have really nice PCBs. There have been also FPGA programming uh, workshop and much more. And we had some cool projects like telescope, uh, some robots, uh, some electric mobility like bikes and cars. Uh, we have also have hacked electric wheelchairs uh, because they were playing basketball with it. And also uh, some fun with plasma in high vacuum that they are going to talk about. Some drones, a CubeSat. Well, Everything is open source, so feel free to have a look to our wiki uh, to see our cool projects and maybe to take part. And there are also lab projects which are f um, using the lab money to, to, to run. So the first one of course was of course building a hackerspace, but we spend a lot of time and money to repair all the equipments that we collect from the garbage, uh, such as the milling machines and, and, uh, and the, the oscilloscopes and whatever. Um, there is a cool project of uh, spectrum and vector ana analyzer you have on the on the pictures down here, and some process motor controller and uh, the PCB prototy prototyping lab, of course. So, if you have any questions about how we build this place, uh, yeah. yeah. How did you manage to sort out the fan drops and the non-fan drops in the heat? The fan drops. 
had a fun job. Well, you know, it was like a, a huge cake we had to share. And uh, we, because of the, the motivated team, we have 10 core members, in fact, and they take the decisions and they give the, the directions the lab is going to go. And of course, uh, when you gather 20 people for a weekend saying, OK, this weekend we're doing plumbing, it's not really interesting. So you have to plan everything and to buy all the materials, all the tools, all the equipment, and to do small tasks to share to everyone. And so when people arrive, they are very quickly efficient, and they don't lose the time. Because you know, if, if the weekend is boring, they will never come back. Um, so that's how we tried to give good and hard jobs to some people and easier one. Um, but also the point was to learn stuff together. And by doing stuff together, even, even if it was not interesting, then we were still uh, building up the team and learning, like, plumbing. It's right. Yeah. No, we, we didn't have any funding. We only had the building, uh, well, the place uh, for free. And all the rest we done it by ourselves. Uh, we spent an awful amount of time uh, repairing equipment and then selling them on eBay, for example, to get some extra money. Uh, well, the, the, um, the budget for the first year was 10,000 euros. So. Uh, like a half was from donations and a half was from uh, uh, selling stuff. And how many members do you have currently? Obviously, the membership then has become quite a Yeah, we have 60 members currently. Yeah, which is quite a lot. Uh, much more than a the space can handle, in fact. So we have to you know, uh, throttle uh, all our members so they can come uh, on several days of opening. So maybe it's time to uh, show one of the cool projects we've been working on. Um, they've been working really hard those last months. So uh, I give you uh, Silva and David. Want to use the mic or if you? <laughs> Hello, everybody. So I'm here to talk about um, the chamber you probably see downstairs. <laughs> uh, in fact, the project uh, starts uh, five, year ago, five years ago uh, in my garage, and uh, with very limited finance, mint, uh, and, uh, and materials. In fact, I was planning to use a uh, whole the water heater <laughs> to, to build a chamber and uh, metallize a telescope mirror. Uh, limited finance because the project starts with uh, 500 euros. And uh, today, we are at uh, 10,000. Uh, with yours. So, yeah, quite a difference. <laughs> Today, uh, you see the chamber project before and uh, now. <laughs> the main difference was, was what uh, I joined the, the, the Electro Lab that uh, Samuel uh, presents. And it passed from what uh, can I do? From what uh, do I want to do? And uh, the game change. The new games was to find the, the limits of the, what uh, we can actually do in do it yourself uh, and push it uh, to the max uh, and to do uh, some kind of project uh, like uh, plasma etching or. Uh, Elimination or um, electron beam, beam microscope or um, electron beam welding that's uh, on the way too. So it starts for 
we start from the bait and scratch. We we start from scratch, and uh, we have to learn from scratch. Yeah, and uh, we manage to to learn to uh, to weld, stainless steel weld, to matching, to turn and mold the, uh, the flange and the other parts, to actually bend. Uh, I, uh, bend uh, big part of steel, uh, like you see uh, here, to reinforce the the side of the of the chamber, because uh, it will crush with the pressure otherwise. Um, the system itself uh, yep, was fun. I will make it. <laughs> um, we start, uh, before making that chamber, we start uh, one year ago with uh, another version of, uh, of this one, and we do a lot of testing with plasma physics, with a different uh, size and form of uh, electrode, and uh, different kind of, uh, of current, uh, DC, AC, pulse to DC, and um, to understand what is uh, going on and uh, what we can use and what we can't use. So from that, we learned uh, so much, much, in fact. Uh, and uh, we will use uh, in the next months to, to do some, um, some work with, with that. Uh, um, actually, the difficult part of the project was uh, to to find space in the electrolab because uh, it requires it require, uh, more space that, than uh, we can reasonably uh, take. <laughs> and uh, in fact, I, I actually I take uh, almost uh, the half of the electrolab uh, for this project. <laughs> so there is. Uh, I, I put part in all the all the place in the lab. <laughs> uh, cost uh, control because uh, all the parts of uh, uh, vacuum chamber vacuum chamber is are very expensive, and in Europe we don't have uh, eBay. Uh, eBay France is near empty. Uh, we do find some parts in eBay UK and eBay Deutschland. But there are um, there remains uh, pretty rare. Uh, self engine because uh, sometimes uh, when it doesn't work, uh, uh, typically uh, when I was welding, I order uh, by yelling a big glass of water to spray over the weld uh, before the the steel melts totally and uh, ruins uh, the chamber. <laughs> It was uh, an epic moment of uh, quasi failure. <laughs> uh, planning management was really an issue too. Uh, we plan to finish the chamber uh, in, in November, in fact. And uh, yesterday morning, we was uh, welding on the, on the chamber again uh, to to put uh, the gasket in, in the face. So it was uh, not quite uh, I expected. Uh, so I will let my colleague talk about that uh, part. So, okay. Hello, so I'm David, an aircraft member. Uh, I worked with Sylvain on the project. Uh, one of the main problems uh, to realize this system was to, to build the production tools because uh, at the beginning, the Electrolab was only equipped with small mechanic equipments. Uh, and this project needs 
very specific equipment or very big equipment. Uh, as an example, the, uh, a milling machine, uh, a lath, a big lath, and, and the TIG, uh, and TIG system. So what is, uh, what have been, uh, what have been, what, what have, have been made by the Electrolab is to, to have a shared cost, uh, because if we make an action for, to repair an equipment or to, to get an equipment for the Electrolab, uh, we, can, we can have access to this equipment. So this, this, the cost of this equipment is, is shared between the, this project and the Electrolab itself. Uh, this, uh, these have been the, the main uh, way to have the production tools to realize the chamber. Uh, as an example, uh, high power or industrial machines, the, the big village machines, the big last, uh, the TIG, uh, the other, uh, the other important thing is uh, the knowledge sharing. Uh, it is a very complex project uh, which needs a lot of knowledge to realize it. Uh, you need mechanical knowledge, you need electrical knowledge, you need physics knowledge. So the, the main characteristic of the Electrolab is to have many people coming from uh, a lot of domains, different domains. And it has been very important for this project to share knowledge and to have uh, comments from other point of view, points of view. Uh, another really important thing has been the motivation uh, because uh, to build the chamber, it takes a long time. It takes uh, a lot of man hours. And each time we had a problem, each time we, are, we were blocked, uh, uh, we had uh, a lot of help from our members out of a lot of comments, uh, and it has been very important, and this is, uh, this is uh, the thing uh, given by the lab, the Electrolab. Uh, another way to, to work on the project is, uh, is the single mal added value. Uh, in fact, in the Electrolab, each, each member can can give its competent uh, knowledge, and it has been very important. Because, uh, as an example, we had to repair uh, different machines. We have to transform the, the machine to 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 build the project, but we have to transform the machine also to to be a part of the Electrolab. Uh, so it, each knowledge, each competence uh, was uh, very important. Uh, the point, I think the methods, um, when you want to, to produce something, you, have, uh, you can do it by the books, and sometimes you have to find another way to do that. Uh, as an example, when you want to prepare um, a diagram for TIG welding, you can use uh, fluoridic acids, but it's too dangerous, it's complicated, and the question was, uh, uh, can we do it, do that in, at the Electrolab? And the answer finally was, no, we can't. So we have to find another solution and we found another solution to do that. And the, the last point, because it's a really a part of the, the, the building of the production tool and the, the team of the project was to teach each member of the, of the team the, the knowledge to realize the chamber. Uh, as an example, um, when I came to the lab, I didn't have the knowledge to use the last 
or to use the milling machine. Uh, so I have to, I, I had to, to learn how to use these machines. Uh, it depends on the member who came. So, uh, like I said before, the project was divided in, I will pass to the next, uh, I already said this. So, uh, the chamber itself, though, so like it was uh, one week ago, so uh, it just came from the, the sanding uh, manufacturer. Uh, the flange of the chamber are uh, principle uh, are uh, con flat tip flange. Uh, are, uh, this is the standard, uh, so if, uh, we can use uh, parts from commercial commercial parts to connect uh, different accessories to, to the chamber. Uh, this was actually uh, quite a challenge to realize because. Uh, we use uh, conflict flange, flange use uh, a copper gasket and the, it must be uh, squeezed uh, between the flange and uh, so the parts must be machined uh, with uh, high precision to squeeze the gasket uh, with enough, uh, enough force. Uh, if you have uh, any question about this, uh, we can discuss this later because it is a topic uh, who can take several hours uh, by itself. So, yeah. uh, the pump was actually, we had very luck at the labs. We managed to find uh, in trash uh, many uh, turbo molecular pump. If uh, to take, um, if we had to buy this, we, it, will, it will cost us um, uh, more than 20,000 euros. Uh, so we are very happy to manage to, to find this one. Uh, uh, we have, uh, don't, like I said, the, the pump we use in the, on this uh, chamber was uh, our turbo molecular pump. Then, but there are other technology like uh, oil diffusion pump. The problem is the, we, the vacuum is not as clean as the turbo pump. So uh, even if uh, oil pump has a, a higher pumping rate, uh, much, much higher in fact, uh, we prefer to not use them and uh, reserve it for uh, later project we, we, with uh, less uh, restrictive uh, needs on the on the property of the of the curve. Yeah. Uh, alors, the door actually there is a, a glass door on the on the chamber, but we planned to take many many doors. In fact, to make uh, almost one door by project to do uh, doors with instruments built in it and, uh, and to avoid to clean the glass after each uh, metal deposition because the metal with, uh, dip, fin, will deposit on the part but also on the glass. So it's, if, if it's aluminum, uh, it, it's okay. We, we just need uh, chlorhydric uh, acid. But if, it, uh, if it's uh, titanium, uh, we never we, <laughs> we, we have back uh, the, 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 the glass door and it will be uh, metal, metallized forever. So that's why we plan to, to make different, uh, different uh, door and uh, to answer so, uh, to some needs we don't have today and we, sorry, we'll have tomorrow. Uh, we planify three types of uh, plasma source. Uh, actually, 
one is missing here. Uh, a radio frequency plasma source, uh, which is on the table downstairs. Uh, I will discuss about this some later. And uh, a Hull effect source, uh, I will discuss this later too. The third one is in here. It's a microwave plasma source. Uh, we actually cannot plan to do that uh, for in many years because uh, we actually didn't have time to. <laughs> uh, so the whole effect plasma source uh, that we build actually, it's uh, yeah in coop uh, here. It's uh, composed with three magnets. Uh, neodym magnet to constrict uh, the plasma into a, a cone to form a, a ion beam, a directive ion beam to hedge a specific uh, area of, the, of a substrate and at a very precise uh, energy levels to use plasma etching or uh, uh, assistance in thin film deposition or uh, Ion beam uh, polishing. So, actually, it's a design, uh, a basic design I found on uh, Fozor.net. So, it's a, it was open. So, I take the, the best uh, design and I uh, modify it uh, and op I uh, optimize it uh, with uh, some electrostatical and magnetostatical uh, simulation and. To manage to optimize the different parts, and uh, we will have uh, different uh, so and we will test uh, them in in condition to to understand what will really happen uh, again, and uh, to to make better the process. The RF plasma source. Uh, so it works on a different principle. It, uh, here we use 13.5 uh, 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 megahertz, but it uh, it will also work at uh, two megahertz. Uh, this part was actually not at all. I didn't touch any part of it. It was made by uh, another member of uh, the Electro Lab, uh, which much aware about. Uh, Radio frequencies technology uh, that I am actually, uh, I uh, barely understand uh, anything about it. So uh, this, uh, this is the, the diagram of uh, of the fundament of uh, of the source. Uh, the oscillator is not made, not yet made. Uh, probably uh, currently, uh, the next uh, months. Uh, the amplifier was made in one day, in one day with uh, spare parts uh, we found in uh, in the different places in the lab, and uh, he is actually don't, he is uh, on the table downstairs, and I have a photo too. The impedance matching so was uh, with the coil. Uh, uh, and the antenna, the antenna come from uh, eBay, eBay UK. Uh, I found it from a couple of, uh, of euros, so I, I take it. Uh, and it's uh, a nice piece of, of copper. Uh, and uh, that's uh, the antenna and the matching box uh, as it. It uh, has not been tested actually, but it, uh, normally it will work. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the power on dry fire uh, as it is uh, actually. actually the, there are some parts we cannot uh, made by yourselves. Uh, the fit throws uh, are one of them. Uh, we can. The difficult part is to weld uh, ceramical with uh, metal, and uh, for that we use uh, silver uh, welding and uh, with the titanium or uh, indium. And I try it. I fail miserably. <laughs> so I order a couple of uh, fit through. This one are uh, from uh, 150 uh, four, uh, amps and uh, 5 uh, kV. So they are pretty, they are pretty much uh, 
they're quite a beautiful piece uh, of engineering. But mm, to solve them of the, of the on the flange was quite a challenge because uh, the thickness of the, of the steel uh, cup is, uh, is very, very thin. And uh, the, in the opposite, the flange were resi is very thick. So uh, there is quite a difference. And the better way I find to, to weld it was to do it uh, without any uh, welding metal. And uh, just with the, with the torch, I uh, make a, a pass around it and, on, and uh, a turn gentle. And the, it uh, works uh, well. Another very difficult part was the milling of the, of the face of the, of the chamber for the, the main gasket for the door. We tried to do that in the, with the mill. It was a catastrophic failure. Uh, part flies uh, all over the place. So back to plan B. <laughs> uh, it was uh, take uh, 20 hours to mill, fin, to, yeah, to call, call that milling uh, the, the face. The, the tolerance uh, is uh, 0 0.1 millimeter. Uh, that's uh, very hard to to achieve uh, with this technique. And uh, actually, I, I know whether it will work or not. We will see, because uh, the chamber is actually never uh, go down in pressure. We, we finished this uh, yesterday morning, and we put it, put it, put it in the car directly for here. So we will see uh, later. Yeah. Finally, the, what we learned is the flange, the conflict flange that many person uh, says we can't manage to do this by yourself. Uh, finally, we have done the many five uh, big uh, DN100 uh, uh, flange, and uh, so and with uh, limited skills in uh, turning and. Uh, Milling. So I think everybody can make it. The welding was also, if we forget some, just few of the welding was actually very difficult. The inner uh, ring uh, weld was quite a challenge. That's uh, when I, I used the water to cool the, the metal. But um, if we can use a sufficient amount of, uh, of gas for shielding and uh, back shielding, it's actually quite easy. And uh, it's what uh, stainless, stainless steel is pretty fun. easy to weld, in fact. So it was a good surprise, too. And uh, the design evolves massively because the, the needs change almost every week. So we found new ideas. We uh, put it back, old ones. And uh, so I think uh, other person here can knew that uh, uh, the, the human aspect. Some, some weekend, we have uh, uh, more than 10 persons working on the, cham on the chamber on different parts of it. So explain to all the members uh, what to do, how to do, what, uh, how uh, this will, uh, this will uh, make the project uh, move forward. It was uh, quite interesting, quite a challenge, but uh, more, of more and more people in, uh, in the lab are interested in the project and come from uh, what can I do with that? Uh, uh, oh, it's, inter it's, inter it's, uh, it's interesting. I, I will uh, make a mirror for my, and the telescope too. Uh, it will be fun. Um, in, in two years ago, I was uh, the only one with the project. Uh, today, we, have, uh, we are six or seven uh, to have this plan in head. Uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, happy uh, news. <laughs> and the extra contribution, but the, like you see, uh, I start with uh, a water heater in steel. Uh, cover with, uh, with uh, rust, uh, 
And uh, today I have uh, the stainless steel chamber that is uh, downstairs. So, and and mainly I have the the turbo pump uh, that I never dream of it before uh, I uh, I first enter in the lab. So, thanks, thanks uh, lab. So, did you have any question? So. Thanks for your attention. And uh, if you have uh, any question, uh, I will be downstairs uh, near the, the chamber. So. Okay. So thank you for your presentation. Um, we are a bit ahead of time, so there will be a break until uh, 4.15. Uh, then we will have a talk which uh, will show us uh, some work on a random number generator using uh, quantum uh, mechanics. Um, so for the people watching us in the stream, we will wait until 4.15 to start with the talk. See you then. <laughs>